So now that we've talked about the die, let's move on to the second component. In this video, we will be talking about the use of acid in the yarn dyeing process. So what it's for, how to make it, and how to apply it. You need acid for the color to stick to the yarn. So you can use something as common as vinegar. So this is just your regular household vinegar that you would use to make salad dressing or you might use it for cleaning. Just you just get this at the grocery store. And this comes in a four this side this is a four liter a four liter jug. So you can use vinegar. The only time that I do use vinegar is when I'm dyeing yarn that has stellina or sparkle. Sparkle yarn is another way to refer to it. So it has these little filaments or little um, metal threads running through the yarn and it just makes it look really sparkly and pretty. Well, I find when I use citric acid, it eats away at the metal and it dulls it down. So it kind of, the colors or the, the yarn isn't as sparkly when I use it. So the vinegar doesn't harm that in any way. It's more gentle. So that's the only yarn that I will use vinegar on. Other than that, I always make my own citric acid and that's what I use. So let me show you quickly how I do that. So I fill the jars pretty much all the way to the top and I'm just leaving a little bit of space here because I'm gonna add the citric acid powder to it and I wanna have enough room in here that I can shake the container and fully dissolve the citric acid powder in here. So I measure out two third, two third cups of the citric acid powder and I just use a funnel to put it into the container. And it's as easy as that. So just give each of these a good shake. And I make sure that before I use it, if this has been sitting for a while, I always give it a shake before I pour it out and, and apply it to the fiber, just to make sure that any crystals have, um, just to make sure that that acid is evenly distributed through the water. And that's it, that's it's that simple. Now that you've seen me make the citric acid, I just wanted to explain a little bit how I use it. So I've already talked earlier about the three components that you need to dye protein fibers. So you need your dye, you need citric acid, you need an acid, that's the mordant, that's what's going to stick the or help stick the color to the protein fibers and you need heat as well in combination with the acid to adhere that dye to the fibers so depending on how much this is where you're going to experiment and play when you're developing your colors the amount of acid and the amount of heat and the time that you that you add those two components is going to determine how your color is going to turn out. So for example, if you are dyeing a color and you want the you want the dye to strike or hit very fast and stay in place, you're going to use a higher concentration of citric acid to the dye to the to the water or to the fibers because you really, the higher the acid, the faster that yarn is, is going to absorb 
the dye. Here's a couple of examples of where I would use a really high concentration of acid in the water. When I'm dyeing stripes, I really want those colors to stay separate and I want them to be clearly seen and not blend together. So when I use a high concentration of acid compared to the level of water that's in the pan, it encourages the yarn or the dye to strike very quickly. So you can see in the stripes that I'm applying here, that acid ensures that those colors stay in place immediately and they stay where I put them. They're not blending together and you can see each color clearly. Another time that I'll use high acid concentration is when I'm doing speckles. And it's for the same reason. I want those colors to stay separate and be clearly seen. So I want them to strike the fiber and adhere really quickly, set into the fiber and show a distinct speckle or spot of color. Now, of course, the opposite holds true. If you have a very low concentration of acid with, say, a high amount of water, then the dye isn't going to strike very quickly. And techniques that you will want that result is if you're dyeing solid colors or semi-solid colors. You really want to have enough water in the pot so that the yarn can move freely. And you don't want to put in a lot of acid because you don't want that dye to strike very fast. You want it to have time, you want the dye to have time to move around and fully coat the yarn so that you can get a nice even color. So often I will initially put dye in the water and I won't even add the acid right from the start. I'll let the dye move around and penetrate into the fiber as much as it can. And then later on, I'll come back with a little bit of acid, add that to the pot and let it slowly absorb into the fiber and let that dye very slowly strike. And that's how I ensure a more even coating, as you can see here. So there's no splotchiness. The color is nice and even. And that's because I've used a low amount of acid and a high ratio of water. The process of dyeing yarn can be quite unpredictable. And really that's what makes it so fun and exciting. But when you understand the relationship of the components that we just discussed, the acid and the dye, when you understand how they work together, then you can experiment and you can kind of produce some predictable results as well, as long as you have that initial understanding. And then you can break the rules and manipulate things to get truly unique and interesting effects.